Hey everybody, today, well, we're back with another live video and today we are talking about solar power and what can that solar power power <laughs> <laughs> in the RV. Um, it's a very popular topic, so hopefully I do a pretty good job of explaining everything. I'm going to start with a basic understanding of how solar works. A lot of times we get questions of what do our solar panels power in our RV? And really, the, honestly, the only thing they power is our batteries. So when you're running off of solar, you're not truly running off of solar, you're running off your batteries, your house batteries, whether that be two batteries, four batteries, six batteries, and on and on. We know some people that have 10 to 12 house batteries. And all be nice. And all lithium too, yeah. That'd be nice. So what happens is you have your solar panels out. We have two portable power, uh, two portable panels, 100 watts a piece, and we can set them up outside and tilt them and all that. They collect the power from the sun, goes through some wiring that we installed into a solar charge controller, and then that power goes into our batteries and starts to charge our batteries. Then once it's in our batteries, then it can operate things in the RV. Straight from the batteries is 12 volt, so it can operate lights, fans, um, our refrigerator, when on propane. So the way that works is that the fridge is propane, but the control boards is a 12 volt control board. So that's why you need the batteries to operate the fridge, even when it's running on the propane. Same thing with your furnace. Your furnace runs off of propane, but it also runs off a 12 volt fan and control board. So you need the uh, 12 volts for that. Other items like your TV or, geez, uh, charging laptops, that's when you need the AC power and that is when your inverter comes into play and we have a 1000 watt inverter. So the short answer is that with our solar setup, we can run everything in the RV except for our AC unit and our microwave. That's the simple answer. Um, I think a lot of people want to know though, how long can we run things for? So uh, we'll do a little bit of a breakdown. Before we had solar, we already had the Battleborn batteries. We have two of them. They're each 100 amps of usable power, giving us 200 amps of usable power. When we were at Quartzsite last year, uh, we were boondocking with all of our friends out there and we did not have solar yet. And we were able to go three full days and then recharge our batteries on the fourth day, about midday. Sabrina and I use roughly 50 amp hours in a 24 hour period in mild weather. And I say mild weather, that's a, that's a big deal. So, if it is extremely warm out and you're running fans all day to keep cool, you're going to use more power. If it is cold out, if your temperatures, if you're boondocking in not so great a climate and it's cold, you will be running your furnace, which is going to use more power. So I feel as if we are somewhat responsible with our power. We're not crazy concerned with it, but we try to uh, at least monitor it and be aware of it. Uh, so that being said, we use 50 amps when paying attention to it. Uh, with the solar, uh, shortly after Quartzsite, we got a solar system set up. I did the portable panels and we did some boondocking out in Nevada. And once we had the panels, we did not need to run the generator anymore. As long as we did not need the AC unit or the microwave. So these dogs outside, I don't know yeah, what it is sounds going like somebody's killing there. some dogs outside. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> so once we add the solar, our two panels will bring in 96... Let me take, clear that up. Our two panels on a sunny day for eight hours, if we can get eight hours of full sun, then we will get 96 amp hours in a day. So way more than we need. So that's why when we were in Nevada, we never had to run our generator to recharge our batteries because we were getting more sun and more power than our 50 amps. Um, even though we weren't getting full eight hours days of sun out there. 
So, uh, because we were out there in the wintertime, we weren't getting a full eight hours of sunlight. So, if the sun's coming up at 7 and setting at 5, from 7 to 9, you're not getting great sun. And then the last hour of the day, you're not getting great sun. So, we weren't getting that full 96 uh, amp hours per, for the day, but we were probably getting about 70 amp hours in a day. Uh, maybe... But we'll say we'll just say 70 more than what we needed we only needed 50 so we were doing we were in really good shape um waiting for her to settle down a little oh no bit. she's gonna go get her toy now, now so she's if you hear squeaking <laughs> that's what happened <laughs> so if we would to when we were out at quartzite let me go back one second too i wanted to explain so on that eighth day Day. On that fourth, <laughs> sounds like you're creating something. <laughs> the eighth day you rested or something. <laughs> so on that fourth day, when we did have to run the generator, uh, it takes our generator a full seven to eight hours to recharge our batteries. So we had to run it a full eight hours to get all the power back into our batteries if we would run them completely dead. Um, just to give you an idea of just you know how long does it take to get 200 amp hours back into your rv if you don't have solar and uh so so before we did the solar setup we knew how many amps we were using and i think that's important to find out how many amps are you using before you go out and spend the money on solar uh i, I you can always overdo it i guess i mean there's no harm in having too much solar or anything like that it'll just cost you more money but <laughs> <laughs> so so a good way uh, to do that is with a battery monitor system. That's what we had. And we are able to turn each item on individually and turn them off and find out how much power does that item use. I'm going to give you some examples. So this will maybe help you out. Uh, if, if you're trying to figure out how much power you're going to use, if you have LED lights, each LED light, the ones that are like the puck lighting that's up in your ceiling, they use about a half an amp per hour uh, fans the exhaust fans that are up in your ceiling on high use about use about <laughs> use about three amps per hour on high uh, our tv uses it's a 48 inch tv uses six amps and the reason why it uses so much is because we need to turn our inverter on to be able to power it because we need the AC power. So the combination of having the inverter on plus the TV uh, works out to be six amps. Plus we have our boosters that are plugged in. So they're they're pulling power when we turn the AC on as well. So all of them together are giving us our six, six amps per hour. Our RV refrigerator, and this was a big deal for us to have an RV fridge because it runs off propane. So when it's running off propane, it only uses one amp per hour. And that's really been saving. That's why our power consumption is so low. It's really because of that fridge. If you have a residential refrigerator, I wrote it down, I believe somewhere. I did not. Uh, a residential refrigerator normally uses about six amps per hour and it runs 24 hours a day. So it is chewing up power really quick in a 10 hour period. You're already at six, 60 amps just for your refrigerator. That's more than we use combined, everything in the RV combined. Bella's staring your hands you down with that toy. toy in her I will give it back to you in a little bit. <laughs> She's just watching your hands as they're moving. She's like, oh, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> if we want to charge our laptops, they use about one amp to charge the laptops. But again, uh, to charge a laptop, we have to turn the inverter on. Just having an inverter on uses a minimum of an amp. It like fluctuates a little bit. So... To charge computers, you're, you're talking about maybe about two amps to charge a laptop. Um, what if we wanted to run our microwave? What would we have to do to be able to power our microwave? Uh, 
we would have to replace our 1000 watt inverter with a 2000 watt inverter and that's it. Uh, there would be no additional need for batteries, no more need for solar. Just swapping out our inverter and upgrading to a 2000 watt inverter would allow us to run the microwave. The question, how much solar did you say we have? We have two panels. Uh, they're portable panels and they are 100 watts a piece. They bring in about six amps per hour per piece, giving us on a good day, 12 amps per hour. Uh, they're portable, I can tilt them. And that is with tilting them, that's the best we can do. Um, not the best we can do. Uh, I've seen it hit 14 one time or something like that, but 12 is more reasonable, is a more realistic number. If we wanted to run our AC unit, what would we need to do to our power system? We would have to upgrade to a 3000 watt inverter and we would need at least minimum two more Battleborn batteries giving us another 200 amp hours. A, uh, and there's another part that you would need, but we already have it. It's called a uh, Micro Air Easy Start. It was uh, originally developed for the Navy, for the ships when they were out at sea so that they could run their AC units uh, off grid. Um, the company now, it's open, it's available to the public now, and it's just called an easy start. And what it does is it takes that hard start that your AC unit usually has is, I don't know how it works, and makes it easy to start off of a lower amount of power. So if you have a 3000 watt inverter with a micro easy start, you can now start an AC unit in your RV without needing to be plugged into shore power. The AC unit with the micro air uses about 12 amps, maybe 15 amps per hour. Uh, so we would also need more solar. If, if we had just, if we increased our batteries and increased the inverter, we could run the, the AC unit, but we would never be able to recoup that power again. So we would need a minimum of 300 more watts of solar. And the only way to do that would be for us to put them up on the roof because we can't have all these portable panels. Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to say about solar, how it works and how much we use and what we can power and for how long. So we can easily boondock now just between the two of us in mild weather pretty much indefinitely if we're getting sunlight. The great thing about having the batteries, uh, the, the ability to have 200 amp hours, is that it gives us a little bit of a buffer so when we're out boondocking if we're not getting sunny days every day we know that we can go three days and as long as the sun's going to come out on that fourth day and it's going to be sunny all day we'll get that power back so regina said stop teasing and bell with the ball okay <laughs> <laughs> i will i know everybody's probably thinking i'm being really mean to her right now this is good for her keeps her focused and keeps, keeps her thinking sharp look at her <laughs> she is sharp for looking at me right now if she could curse me out, she would. <laughs> You're being a very good girl, Belle. Yes, a very good girl. So I think that's everything that I had to say about solar. Did you want to add anything to the solar? I know you said that this topic for you was not very interesting, but you were going to sit in and on it. Yeah, anyway. so Regina, I actually did work last night, and I'm working again in a couple hours, but I did wake <laughs> up like an hour ago, mulled in the bed for a little bit, and I said, okay, I'll get up. I think I'll put some effort forth in... Yeah, so I, I'm here. <laughs> the nice thing is that Sabrina is doing telemedicine at the moment, so she is working from the RV. Uh, that was another big deal why, you know, we, we talked about in our other video about internet connection and why it's so important for yeah, us to so have I think I covered connection. I covered five hospitals last night. Um, yeah, it was good. Busy. It was busy, and <laughs> I, only two of them were really busy. The other three, really, they didn't even call me all night. But the other two, <laughs> <laughs> So she, even though she's working from home, she gets... I'm just, zero sleep. I mean, I'm just up. I guess that's yeah. what work is. You're not sleeping normally at work, so it's fine. It is what it is, but yeah. But yeah. Maybe we could do, do a whole video about your telemedicine one day. I bet you people will be interested about that and your robot that you drive. And <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a cool cool idea. It's cool. It's a fun One of the hospitals thing. last night didn't spring for the driving robot, so I was kind of standing there helpless like, hey, can you move me? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was interesting. I, all right, everybody. Well, I think that is it. Thanks for sticking through <laughs> through this yeah, video. Sorry, with... it was so rough. We yeah. were like expecting it to be like solar, streamlined, easy, and yeah, it just didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, little bell, little bell. All right, everybody.
Oh, sorry. I'm going to stop you for one second. Yeah. Question. Did you ever figure out what happened with the generator and the toaster? No. Well, yes and no. So it is a out of phase issue. I took our moldy meter. I kept on doing a little bit more testing. We are not getting the proper 60 hertz out of our outlets when running off the generator. And uh, the AC unit is looking for 60 hertz. So is the microwave. It is literally all over the place. It is sometimes down to 20 hertz and as high as 200 or 300 hertz. So uh, we're gonna bring it back to Onan, show them what I found. I don't, I'm not sure why they didn't find that, but I'm gonna bring it back to Onan, show them what I found with my meter that the hertz is just every once in a while. It, so, so the funny thing is, so not funny, but <laughs> if we have the meter in the outlet and I turn on the toaster oven for some reason, I have no idea what's going on, but we get the 60 hertz. The, 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 the hertz calm down and go back to 60 hertz, allowing the AC unit to kick on. Why that happens, I don't know. I just know that's what's happening and that, that's the problem. Part of the, uh, the way we figured this out was that when we were visiting our friends, Matt and Maria, uh, he has a large uh, generator and we unplugged, we unhooked our generator, hooked hooked our RV up to the generator that he had at his house and uh, everything worked fine. So we were like, it's the generator. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did a little bit more uh, tinkering around and, and figured it out. So, that generator, if I could replace, if Sabrina would let me, I would replace the generator with all lithium batteries. We've got friends that have done it and they really enjoy it and it's quiet. And Maybe eventually. I won't be the bad. I'll only be the bad guy for a little while, but maybe eventually. I don't know. That's a big. That's a big leap. That's a big leap. It is a big leap. All right, everybody. Take right, care. Guys. Safe Thanks travels. For joining us. And we will catch you tomorrow. We'll give Bell her ball. Here you go. Take it. Now you don't want it. Go take it. <laughs>